All right, everybody. Welcome to Rock Titan Live. I am Scotty J. I've got an amazing guest with us right now, live from the tour trail. One of the greatest musicians, one of the most diverse musicians on the face of the planet Earth, and definitely one of the best products out that Canada has ever created. We are here with Devin Townsend. Devin, how are you, sir? I'm good, man. Proud to be a product. <laughs> yeah, right? You know, we, we're all a product of something, but uh, Canada's got to be proud. But the, you know what? Before we get going here, man, because I know you're in Philadelphia right now, and I saw that uh, in just over a week you're actually going to be in Nashville. And, of course, it's all over the news right now that they just got hit pretty hard by a tornado. And I just want to send thoughts and prayers out to all our friends and, uh, you know, the music community and everyone else down there in Nashville right now. I hope everyone's all right. And, uh, shoot, you know, I hope you got a decent venue to play in when you're down there, man. No, it doesn't necessarily matter at this point. I feel that um, wherever I show up, I'm usually okay to play. Sometimes it's uh, some really nice places lately, but, you know, sometimes you're still in the, uh, the, the trenches and... But I figure as long as I'm there, I might as well play. Right on. Well, I know you got a packed house there in Philly tonight. And, uh, you know, of course, we are in support of Empath. And last year, when it, almost a year ago, when it came out, I tried to catch up with you. But you were already on your way to Europe. Man, yeah. I, um, I, I find that my uh, touring schedule is, it goes in chunks. I usually will have like a year or two of more of an insular period that allows me to sort of try and uh, climatize to all the new experiences. I think uh, just as a person in general, I would be fine to never leave home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so the fact that I've chosen a job that, that thrusts me into the fray every two months basically gives me things to write about. And so um, in those two years, I kind of just try and take all those experiences and and see what music lies in them, and uh, and then I end up where I'm at now, which is a two-year period of just perpetual touring, and that's where I saw you last. Right, right. Now, with Empath, um, first of all, congratulations on the success of it. It is an amazing piece of work. I'm just blown away at, you know, at when I referred to you as a diverse musician, you know, as well as a very celebrated one, uh, it really does encapsulate so many of the different styles and genres of music, you know, that, that you played with, you know, whether it was, you know, Strapping Young Lad all the way to Devin Townsend Project. I mean, it really, you know, it, like your solo music, it just, it pulls everything in. And I guess now that it's kind of been uh, marinating, you know, simmering, if you will, for like the last year, are you happy with it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think the thing for me is... As an artist, I just feel that my role is is you know, all artists. I think if we're being honest with ourselves, I mean, some would disagree, I'm sure, but we're antennas to this stuff, and your role in it is just to try and articulate it rather than to lay claim to it, right? And so when it comes to particular periods of my life where I'm privy to melodies and, and, and pieces of music like Empath that, that seem to want to come out, through me, I guess. Um, you just hope that you can do it correctly. And I listened through, somebody had pointed me towards the song Singularity, and I listened to it last night, actually. Okay. And um, considering how complicated of a piece of work that song is, I think it's, it's, it's pretty good, man. And I think that um, the 5.1 record is really good. And um, even if I get something to 97%, I will forever rue that three percent. You know, interesting, so, interesting. So even if it's even if it's really close to, to hitting the mark, uh, I will focus on the things that that didn't hit the mark. But I think as long as it makes me feel like what the original intention for the piece of music was meant to make me feel, then I I can let it go, right? And so I could let go empath. Okay. All right. Now, because of the lot of, of the music that you've made, you know, some of which, you know, does kind of remind me of, you know, Dream Theater, just because of the, you know, the prog metal, prog rock um, elements of it. 
one of the things that's very interesting about you as an artist, it reminded me a lot of something that I heard from Jordan Rudess you know, when we were talking one time, and he refers to himself as a musician in that constant search for the ultimate sound. And just in listening to all your work, you seem so much like that exact same kind of musician where you're just on the constant quest for that perfect sound that you may or may never find. Yet no, you're, we'll never find it. You we'll know, never. Yeah. Never, never find it. I think that's that's what keeps us going. You know, it's like a it's like a donkey with a carrot in front of them. I think that uh, I don't know Jordan, um, but I I do know that what you just described of his process uh, resonates with me, specifically in that I'm a, an imperfect perfectionist. So I want it to be what I feel it should be in my head. And it, it, it won't be, it can't be, it never will be. But um, I keep striving for it for whatever reason. Maybe it's just uh, ego or, or just um, persistence or just some sort of naive need to solve the puzzle. Right on. But um, I think ultimately underneath all that though is, is a desire to honor it. And that is the most important aspect of it to me. It's like these ideas that I have in my head are so much more vast than I can ever do. But as long as I feel like I've done my best, then at least it, it implies a, a level of, of honor to that creative muse that I think is important to me. Interesting. Inter so the way you're really kind of explaining your music at this point to me, Devin, you know, and please correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty confident you will. It sounds like you, you don't, you, you never just start with a piece of music, you know, and just kind of go at it haphazardly and kind of whatever it winds up being is what it winds up being. You actually have a goal. You actually have this objective that you are setting out to accomplish when you're making this music. So you really kind of have a, a strategy would that be accurate? Well, it's it's a little bit of both things. I have a strategy when it comes to what I'm trying to uh, impart on the audience emotionally. Okay. Like, and by that I mean, usually what happens is when I uh, am in the presence of a new idea, there's like a hint in my head of when I listen to this, I want it to make me feel. X, uncomfortable, comfortable, happy, sad, whatever, right? Like, and that feeling is is crystal clear to me. That color and that shape is really crystal clear to me. But the form it takes is not at all. And so my process itself of stumbling upon it is actually very haphazard. I just kind of mess around until something reminds me of that feeling. And then I just isolate that bit that reminds me of it and then just keep mining away at that until the truth is revealed of that idea. And I think your I think your 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 creative motivations guide you to a real singular um, uh, vision. But the music is is very much for me like a like a side a side uh, effect of the process. And so it, it comes out in a bunch of different uh, aesthetics, right? Like it can be really heavy or really country style or, or pop or ambient. But as long as I'm achieving the aim of having the audience participate in a similar emotion to the one that I did when the idea came to me, that's how I, I mean, it's, it's a complicated thing to describe, but I think that's the easiest I can put it. You know what, it's interesting the way you describe all that, though, because it actually rem reminds me of another friend of mine. He's actually a sax player for uh, Pink Floyd, Scott Page. And he has this thing that he's doing out in California called the Think Experience, where it's, it's really not just about the music. It's about the overall experience. It is what you as an artist are trying to achieve in bringing the audience into your world. Not just entertaining them with your music, but giving them this total visual experience too. And uh, it sounds like something where, you know, I could just see you totally like in like an enclosed dome with like, you know, 3D images and laser light show and all that kind of stuff, like really putting on a visual experience to go along with your music. Is that something that you uh, have ever kind of entertained doing on like a real big scale? Yeah, no, it's, but I think maybe um, my reasons for wanting to do, to do that are, are, are maybe um, 
a little a little specific like um my uh connection to the music and the experience that i'm hoping to impart is much more of a byproduct of me trying to excuse my french unfuck myself <laughs> okay right. and i think that that's my objective like much more so than making an experience for people or okay. selling things or putting on shows it's like it's not like I couldn't care less because clearly this is my job and I've got to make a living. And so um, I, you know, and, and I like to entertain people. If I'm going to go out and play, I want to help rather than hinder. I like the idea of the process that has resulted in this music when it comes to a live experience being something that is like a positive thing, you know, in a specifically in a, in a, an environment in which we're in where there's just so much perpetual negativity, right? Like mm. I choose that. However, my reasons for wanting it to be an experience are, are not because I'm like a dyed-in-the-wool entertainer or I'm trying to create a circus that would draw people in. It's just that the ideas seem, if I'm going to, again, honor them in the ways that I feel I should, that's what they require, right? And so that's really my motivation, much more so than wanting to make an experience for the audience. Okay, right on. So it's almost like self therapeutic, you know, in, in, in a certain kind of way. It's like what you do just to kind of it's it's more for yourself, like your own mental, emotional, physical health. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's um, it's very fortuitous that I've made a living at it because that allows me to uh, work within the parameters of my only job qualification. You know, I'm like unqualified for employment other than this, right? <laughs> so with that in mind, it's great that um, I can do this. And I, I go out of my way to try and make it as cool for people as possible. But fundamentally, the process that I think I am engaged in in terms of writing music is much more of a byproduct of being emotionally stunted when I was younger. Okay. But having music be this kind of convenient loophole that allowed me to express myself specifically in a family environment where overt displays of emotion were not particularly encouraged, you know? Okay. So if you're, if you're a sensitive nature, you got to find an outlet for that stuff or else it's going to come out in addictive tendencies or, or, or a myriad of other ways. And so it was convenient for me to do music on some sort of therapeutic level, I guess. And it's also convenient that that has become my vocation but um, I guess it's important for me to to also say that I'm not, you know, I'm not on a mission. Right. You know, I'm right. not trying to, I'm not trying to do anything with this. I'm just, I love music, and I got a shitload of it that just always falls out of me, and I feel that if it's my job, I want to help rather than hinder. And so, if what it takes to make people happy for a night is to you know, put a bunch of stuffed animals on stage or have coffee, drinking aliens or whatever, then fuck it. I love it. I love it. Now, you do, you talk about stuffed animals, and uh, I don't suppose you have that octopus with you from Genesis, do you, from that music video? We have, um, because on this run, um, you know, uh, I'm trying to build my profile in America uh, for a number of reasons. I mean, there's there's potential here for it. It seems like, um, you know, the audience that I have is, is basically the same wherever I go. Like, it doesn't really matter. Um but in America I, and Canada, I haven't spent as much time touring here as, as other places. And as a result of that, we don't have the same budget for stage shows. So on this run, I just decided to use the money that we had to pay for the band and pay for the sound and pay for the crew. But we have no lighting designer and we have no stage show. So what I asked for instead was just for people to bring a bunch of stuffed animals. And then I just asked a local guy to do a stage show. And to be frank, it's worked out really well, man. It's like we That's got awesome. all sorts of shitty octopi, octopi on stage <laughs> that uh, aren't the one from the Genesis video, but no. they're, they're a, uh, a profoundly satisfying replacement. Well, I'll tell you what, I loved those videos you put out in support of Empath, especially Genesis. That's why I brought it up. You know, you talk about stuffed animals. I thought it was so cool how you're just like, you're sitting there. And to me, the way I kind of interpreted, uh, interpreted it, it was like Genesis was like your dream it was like your mind almost like something out of doctor who where the the audience is being invited into your mind into your dream to experience it along with you 
I well, guess, you know? Yes, but I will also um, go back to our prior conversation just a little bit there and say that the music um, that I think as artists we are antennas for does the same thing to me that it does to the audience. Right. As opposed to me saying, welcome to my mind. In a perfect world, my mind is blank. That's what I'm aiming for. I don't want all that shit in my head, man. That sounds horrible, actually. But when I when I write and record that stuff, when you hear it and you kind of say, okay, well, now I guess we go here, now I guess we go here. When I listen to it, that's what it makes me think. So a lot of times um, uh, when you release something that's stylistically so um, chaotic, like a song uh, like Genesis, there's... Uh, sometimes I interpret people's reaction that I'm, as an artist, trying to be provocative with it. Like, you know, we're going from heavy to quiet to disco to country, and there's cats and cows and stuff. Um, you know, and I, as a kid, of course, you know, we all kind of like Mr. Bungle and all those sorts of things, but that's not my objective. My objective is not to say, check out how crazy these transitions are. Okay. Like, that doesn't doesn't get me off at all more so I try to use the video to say hey this is what I was hearing at the time and this is what it made me think okay you know it's not, not like I'm trying to say welcome to the crazy mind of Devin Townsend I mean I hope that my mind for the most part is just you know it's probably food maybe boobies in there somewhere and, <laughs> you know, lots of soft music man I'll tell you what I mean you're an incredible musician, and I know it's been like your entire life. I mean, you got started professionally, really, at a young age. Uh, but it almost, to me, sounds like you've spent a fair amount of time in school, like with philosophy and whatnot, because you do Not sound like quite the philosopher, man. <laughs> no, I just did a bunch of psychedelics when I was in my 20s. I'll tell you, like, spent time with the <laughs> Dalai Lama, man. No, man. I, uh, I think that if I had my shit together uh, psychologically in the ways that um, maybe I like to pretend that I do, uh, I probably wouldn't be writing anything. I think that that's the, uh, that's the rub of this, man. It's, it's like I think that my trip is so wound up in insecurity and, and uh, fear and, and arrogance and all these things that, that – I guess I asked for on some level, you know, I, this is a career that I, it's not like I, this, I'm, I'm doing this against my will, you know what I mean? Like I chose right. to do. Right. So, um, yeah. I think when I was younger, there was the whole martyr thing that, that comes with it where it's like, Oh, poor me, man, my life's so crazy. You know, blah, blah. but the more I think about my own trip, the more I'm like, well, it's crazy because you're doing it to yourself. You dumb shit, you know? And I think that on a philosophical level, I mean, I like to, I like to think about philosophy, I guess, but I also feel very strongly that it's like mental masturbation in a lot of ways. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. And so, yeah. so, and I don't. Again, when I say I don't have like, um, I'm not on a mission. I'm not trying to impart anything to anybody. I'm just trying to make myself suffer less by my own hand. And so I'm working through it. And the byproduct of that is tons of fucking weird records, man. Well, that's the brilliance of your music, I guess. Everybody, I mean, you know, that that's that's the brilliance of Devin Townsend, really. I mean, you just, you really <laughs> summed it up. You did. I mean, you, you've explained the way you go about your craft in a way that I can tell you in the, the thousands of interviews that I've had, conversations that I've had with musicians like yourself. No one has ever articulated anything the way you have. You're a guru, man. You're a guru. No. But well, uh, oh, I'm telling I, uh, you, I appreciate I appreciate the the the, the qu line of questions um, as well are, are are good, man. I just, you know what, man? I think that there's there's also this tendency in society in general right now to look for people to be, uh, you know, to have answers or to be martyrs or all this sort of shit. And I mean, I cannot say enough, man, that a lot of the a lot of the, the answers that I have found for myself are just a byproduct of, of dude, I've just been doing this for so long. Right. I'm like almost 50 now. It's like, it's, it's, it's amazing when you, when you meet people who are older than you, you know, how much your 
guruism can fall flat and you're just like, oh, full of shit. And I think that I think that if there's anything that I can unequivocally state is that, yeah, I don't know anything then. And um, but what I do know currently is that I still like music. I'm surrounded by a bunch of great people. Um, I love playing guitar. Uh, being on tour is good for me because it forces me to like uh, confront a lot of things like, you know, all this coronavirus shit that you hear about yeah, all the time. Yeah, man. Scary. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, you know, I got a 50 per person meet and greet tonight and, uh, and we're in a bus and there's all these sorts of things. And, and maybe part of the trip for me is just like, just being in the midst of it. Maybe that's the whole thing for me. Maybe that's what I got to learn. Right. I don't know, dude, but I all the hell out of everything, man. Yeah. yeah. You got it. You just kind of gotta let it go because, what am I gonna do? You know, yeah, no, well, no, I mean, just myself in a hamster bubble. Yeah, no, just the, the the way you go about things and the way you explain everything, just your your outlook on things in general. I could say this right now: two musicians I would love to hang out with right now. You know, if I could have two guys to just hang out with all night long and just pick your brains at large, you and Doug Pinnock, because I know uh, you're a fan of King's X, and he is so he, chill. He, you remind me of him in a lot of ways. He's, he's a good friend. He's so matter of fact, you know, he's just chill, he's relaxed, and it's just whatever. There, there's no particular agenda, you know, in any way, shape, or form. He's just doing his thing, you know? I love it. I love I, it. Uh, I'm, I'm cool with hanging if there's coffee. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, man. Hey, hey, hey I'm, I'm a big fan. All right, well, I know you got to get going, but uh, just curious because, you know, obviously Empath has, you know, been doing its thing here for, for a while, and I know you've been, you, you've got tons of songs that you've written, and I know that there's other albums in the pipeline. Are we looking for anything else imminently to follow this Empath tour? Man, I got, till the day I die, I've got nothing but music, man. All I need is time, and I can get more shit done. It's like, yeah, man, that's why I'm here. I'm not here to party. I'm here to write music and uh, play music. And um, I've got shit loads of music, dude. Just just endless amounts of music. I was writing all night last night. I mean, some right now, none of it's super interesting to me, but it's it's interesting. I mean, I don't know if that makes any sense, but it's like it's not saying anything to me yet. But it's yeah, it's some cool stuff. Awesome, awesome. Well, everybody. I'm Scotty J, Rock Titan Live, and we are here with Devin Townsend, just one of the most amazing artists on the face of the earth. He is currently on his Empath Tour. Go check out the dates. Uh, there's many more, many more before he leaves the country. So, uh, yeah, go catch up with this guy, Devin. Thank you so much again, man. It's been a blast. Okay, take good care of yourself, man. Good luck with your podcast, and uh, take care of your family, buddy. You too, man. Thank you. Yeah, cheers.